So the, um, the curatorium of the Biennale is all our relations. It's about collaboration and connectivity. And I see this work uh, titled Gravitas Light as having uh, several connections to that. And the title is a good point to start with. It's not really my title. It was a title that was um, a given to a piece of writing by Robert Leonard in uh, an art in Australia about one or two years ago. Uh, it was the title of his essay. And uh, somehow it seemed extremely fitting for the work. So I asked Robert whether I could use that as the title for this piece, and he agreed. The second point of collaboration is that um, I was invited into the Biennale by Catherine and Gerald, and they invited me on the basis that I produced, uh, the basis of the work I produced at the Govett Brewster Art Gallery in 2008, titled Snowball Blind Time. Their idea was to place the, a very similar work in this space, uh, which for them, referred to the histories of the island in terms of imprisonment, incarceration, and the heavy industry. So I see that as another form of um, collaboration or making connections between myself and a wider community. Thirdly, because the work is so large, um, it requires many, many volunteers and, and crew members. And um, it's so large that I can't take total responsibility for each and every move. And so um, many of the volunteers in that start to take on the ownership of the work in the making of the work through decision making. It's an interesting work because one would usually assume that um, there's some sort of ego that's out of control behind it. But because of this uh, collaborative, uh, because of the collaborative nature of the work, the ego gets shared amongst the collaborators. Um, so there'd be about 12 people working a day, but not the same people working every day. So in total, I'm, I'm, I never took tally of it, but uh, there are about, I'm guessing 60 people that were involved in the project over a five week period. And um, they all started to sort of own it in a, in a way. So that was, that was sort of kind of really, it was something that evolved out of the project that I hadn't anticipated, but I really, a really nice thing. I bought a group of um, New Zealand students of mine from the Eland School of Fine Arts over and um, they started forming uh, friendships with the Australian volunteers that were working on the project and so a whole lot of relationships were set into place which was really gratifying and unusual for me because usually I'm quite cynical about relational work um, and I find those sort of things I find a lot of relational work these days kind of a little bit cliched, but somehow it's sort of evolved and I'm happy with it. Fourthly, the work itself obviously is all about connectivity and, and um, relationships between parts, parts that form a whole. And um, I sometimes see it as um, having some, bearing some sort of mnemonic relationship to um, ideas related to genealogy and strands of genealogy, links and threads and strands, and just the, the physical nature of the work itself. It's obviously just in a formal level. All about um, connections between that which is light and that which is heavy, that which is strong and that which is weak, um, and contradictions between motif and materiality. I guess another theme that I'm interested in in the work is a, is a tension between good and bad, between uh, or about certain assumptions that we make about um, materials. Um, like th there is almost a vulgar usage of, of polystyrene in the work and it's widely regarded as a pollutant. And so one would assume this is really problematic and quite poor practice. But in actual fact, the, the work is not all that it seems to be in terms of that uh, problematic. At the end of the exhibition, all that material gets re returned to the factory and reused. And anything that's not reused by the polystyrene factory is recycled into a product um, which they use in bridge formation. Um, they cast concrete into it. So, in actual fact, the material was used twice instead of once. So there's certain assumptions that are um, sort of um, 
not uh, don't not really meet. 